Okay, Cyrus here. For some reason, I have to introduce myself because this show is getting no ratings. Three people listen. My mother has stopped. She said, "I can't understand you talk too fast." And fair enough. But I've got a sad story I want to talk about right in the beginning before I bring two fighters on board. And fighting is the issue here. There's an evil man called Sunil Jai Singh, 57, secretary of Nagnath Society, who had a stray dog killed by three auto rickshaw friends of his for 3,500 rupees. He's been arrested, and I hope he spends the rest of his life in jail. His fingers and toes are cut off, and he's yeah, served yeah. vegetarian food. Absolutely. A shout out to she Tushar Gogia and former tennis player Meghna Varkaria, who are responsible for catching these guys. So is it just killing dogs for no reason and killing animals for no reason? I mean, what kind of society? I understand uh, two-legged people. Uh, I sometimes because of the hatred between human beings, I can understand. But leave the animals alone, bro. Come on. Absolutely. Very true. Enough. Very Couldn't true. Agree more. See, Very and I've true. got my two fighters here. Uh, so don't lowest form come of scum us. to attack dogs. Yeah. Lowest form Seriously. of scum. Well, what does the dog do? He was barking. You kill a dog because he barks. I mean, like that. That's the law. There'll be nothing left. Chicken people for talking. Finished. Uh, but Same that's our podcast here. Then. I can't get away with it. Think about it, yar. Are you paid for lat mat maro, yar? Please, yar. It, it may be a big pet, but you know. Pehli baar, pehli baar. Chota pair ke saath. Okay, let me introduce you guys. Uh, uh, we have with us Arjun and Somesh. Uh, Arjun Chipal Katti, have I pronounced it correctly? Yes, perfectly. Or is perfectly. it more like Chipal Katti? Chipal Katti, Chipal Katti, Chipal Katti. And Somesh, <laughs> of course, his surname is astounding because it's the third camera in a row we've had. Pranjal was in finance, Kunal is in jail, and Somesh, you are also in bungalow. He is in his bungalow. Yeah. <laughs> your, your Kunal Kamla's bodyguard, clearly. <laughs> They sent you out to learn MMA fighting to protect you. Uh, listen, he can't. Uh, he can't afford me as yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, introduce yourselves. Now, you you started this show about MMA fighting on IVM podcast, and Amit said to plug it. So say it two, three times in the podcast. That is IVM podcast <laughs> as well as your show. But our, our regular listeners are used to our cheapness and the fact that we do all this rubbish, and they have no problem with it because they are like-minded. So we have to. Not worry. Super. So, please go ahead. What's it called? The podcast. The Fighting Goat. Yeah, Goat the as G- in G O A T, which is stands for the greatest, greatest of all yeah. time. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. So sweet of you. <laughs> I'll pause while we do a close up of myself. Ah, sweet, sweet. <laughs> no, but Cyrus, <laughs> how how good does it feel? You know, goat, bakra, bakra, goat. Wow. You're back. Oh shit! Nice, nice. And we put that together. Uh, yeah. Somesh should be hired for PR. <laughs> Forget this uh, fighting career. You can help my career fight in a way. Um, so, so Cyrus yeah. is back on the bakra show. Yeah, some more. Some more the goat. <laughs> But this is a good bucker. That was a stupid one. This is a good one because yo, you're one of the rare, rare findings of you know like upper middle class guys who turned to MMA fighting in India. Which first we didn't even know there was that much of a market, but it's a really big sport now. So take us back to the beginning. Why, how, what, where, when, and do you wear underwear when fighting? This is the one question I want to ask. <laughs> well, uh, there's there's a specific underwear called Gem Gold that we wear while fighting. <laughs> it, what is be? Gem Gold? Hello, I am only Rupa. <laughs> Rupa holds your essentials while you're fighting. Absolutely. What the hell is going on? And gem, it should be gems, no? I stop. <laughs> At this young age, if it's gem, I need to see someone. Stop. Oh. I stop. <laughs> I can't take this. Okay, Rupa and gem. That's what we've established so far. Guys, come on. Tell, tell us how you got in. I mean, I mean, you were telling me offline, Arjun, that you were into you were with Farooq Chotia, learning photography. Uh, you so, come from a, one of your family members is a well-known uh, ad filmmaker. So, where did this come from? And give us the beginning is the most important. How the hell? So, so here's the funny thing. Okay, so I've I've always been a fan. Somesh and I both have been following the sport since about uh, 2004, 2005. I've been a fan of the sport, and you know, you know, just like every regular Indian boy, I watched WWE at home and used to use the same moves on. Which is not quite the same thing as actual content. Not Contact. Contact. Yeah. Not even, not even kind of close. And uh, the th- the funny thing is, I got started with. I was on a shoot, doing a shoot for a magazine called uh, called Spa Mantra, and uh, I was shooting Shilpa Shetty in our house. And that's when I get introduced to Raj Kundra, who's holding a DVD that I recognized one kilometer away, because it said the Ultimate Fighter on it. And I went up to him, and classy as he is, he introduced himself, and I spoke to him, and he told me that he's starting an organization. Of mixed martial arts, and at that point, I'm, I'm I'm a photographer, so I went and gave him my card, saying, "Please, please, I beg you, call me for the advertising." It led into me doing the advertising work for him, and I used to fool around on the microphones backstage anyway. So around 2013, uh, the management then decided to just give me a shot, and I haven't looked back ever since. That's so, so awesome. Commentary. Somesh is making a critical comment which I didn't understand. 
<laughs> I said speaking? that's awesome. <laughs> are you are you being sarcastic? You're irritated, or you're being actually supportive? <laughs> no, I'm I'm actually being supportive. Yeah. I'm actually you're, being supportive. So you're other than otherwise you're also Rupa because you're supporting him. <laughs> <laughs> so much. What's your story? So he uh, got it almost like from the admin side, uh, right? Was helping uh, organizing the the sport and you. Right, right. So, uh, you know, when I was when I was back uh, in uh, college in about two thousand three four, I was always very uh, excited about uh, combat sports, and there was nothing moving beyond boxing, kickboxing. That is when I came across a show called Pride FC on Star Sports back then, which was, uh, you know, like a. It was like yeah, a no. Arjun is having an orgasm. Just one second. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just just say Pride FC again. Let's see how he reacts. Pride FC. Oh. <laughs> Online <laughs> editing at its best. We missed him completely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's us. That's our show. We'll get it wrong every time. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so you know, once I saw this uh, tournament called Pride FC, it was pretty much you know, like a four hundred pound guy facing a two hundred pound guy, and they were actually pounding each that, other. That's Amit Doshi versus me. That's how we started. Yes. The yeah. <laughs> yes, that is exactly Amit Doshi versus Cyrus Brocha. Yeah, it's and, almost right. Yeah, and that's the next episode. <laughs> yeah, Bro, but because of poor cardiovascular functioning, it lasted six seconds. Half five. But do tell me about yours. The guy was pounding the other guy, and this was actual contact. This yes. is actual contact, and I did some research, and I was like, "Wow, you know, this looks crazy." Because I was always into boxing, kickboxing as a professional sport, but we never, you know, uh, we never moved beyond a certain point because you know bureaucracy. It was two thousand three, four. It was you know a good seventeen years back. You're blaming the Manmohan Singh government for this. The lack of taking <laughs> off of the martial arts in mixed martial art formation is because Manmohan Singh didn't open his mouth and Why say, "I want mixed martial arts." Why did I feel that was coming, sir? <laughs> he, he said he started blaming the bureaucracy. You know, I'm trying to think two and three and four. Finally, the Congress has to account for something. <laughs> okay. No, on. no, no, nothing of that sort. Uh-huh. <laughs> But yeah, you know. So, uh, so what happened at that point of time is that. Uh, the the sport was not really known. It was very very new, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the in the West also. And uh, I just did some research. There was nothing happening in India, so I started you know kind of learning from YouTube myself. In two thousand and eight, uh, I went with this gentleman called Alexander Emalyanenko uh, in uh, Russia. He is basically uh, Fedor's brother, one of one of the greatest mixed martial artists uh, of all time. And I went to Russia. I learned the sport. I wow. learned, yeah, I learned the business <clears throat> aspect. This? uh me myself and <laughs> so <laughs> so you told your parents yeah. i'm going to russia to meet an un- unpronounceable alexander something uh, yeah. because his brother may be a legend in a sport they never heard of and in which i might die in during practice yeah. I, I was going to clear. Your father's reaction was, "Beta, MBA karo pella." <laughs> <laughs> well, that well, that was a reaction. But you know, since you know, since I'd gathered up some money, I kind of just went there. You know, lived, you know, lived in these dorms and PGs, and you know, kind of wow. just yeah, I just did my stuff. And with the same company, I went. Uh, oh, so you to, were learning fighting. You were learning the sport. Ka, you know, how to market it. Both of them. Both of them. Wow. Yeah, both know, of them. So the company was called uh, M1 Global. M1 yes, Global. Arjun is saying something. Arjun, Dude, no, what? you know it, it's so funny when you take that name Fedor. No, if you Google him, he was at some point, at one point, till I think 2010, 2012, hmm. he was known as one of the most scariest people on earth. The way he walked, it's like the temperature in the room dropped. Is that hmm. you? You should get chills around him. The guy is the most unassuming, pot-bellied I... guy who'd come out, but he would whip you senseless. I got the same thing. No, 2013. I remember Mayavati uh, coming for this uh, <laughs> this first uh, F1 thing in uh, Noida, and I was part yeah. of that, and I had that same sensation. Just, I mean, with due respect, it's a great presence, whether you like it or not. Sebastian Vettel won because, well, some say he was motivated to go in that direction. Uh, the, was Germany? <laughs> Why are we going there? Let's. Uh, she's a lovely lady, and yeah, Vettel is great. Out. Let's get yeah. back to Fedor. Is it? Yeah, Fedor, Fedor, Fedor. Fedor yeah, you better get Fedor. it right. Oof, you don't want to piss him off. Yeah. <laughs> so Arjun, so, what's yeah. the connection with Somesh while he's in Russia? Yes, now you Paruski. I do you speak Russian? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Somesh, I, I got to give it to Somesh because Somesh was one of the first people who you know the, the you've heard of the UFC. The UFC yeah. is one of the biggest organizations in the world when it comes to mixed martial arts and the most lucrative as well. Somesh was one of the pioneers who became India's first UFC manager. And promoted India's first UFC fighter, a guy called Bharat Kandare, and took him to that world stage. And nobody yeah. else had done that. A lot of people had tried in the past. A lot of people had tried to get inroads, 
but somesh made the right contacts and uh, that's a, it's it's like a big step for for the first indian to be out on the global stage so how did he uh, somesh how did you source this i'm i'm thinking this is not like cricket we go to any village and their word will be out ki ye pravin kumar hai he bowls at 150 uh, how do you Correct. source an mma fighter in a culture which doesn't have it really well uh, in fact quite surprisingly uh, there are a lot of people who are getting into fighting and this was maybe no no, no that's that's the gang was a chota uh, rajan and all that's different that's gangsters <laughs> <laughs> okay ignore me and carry on so you're saying there were there is it like what underground uh, fighting Uh, so you know it's not really underground there are you know <clears throat> see if you go to punjab there are a lot of boxers out there uh, you know maharashtra has a lot of wrestlers down south we have like a lot 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 of you know uh, kallare patu guys so there are guys and in, in the, the east sport. we have uh, people playing football so <laughs> 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 no in fact uh, some of the top uh, mma guys have come from the east so that's true you know that's true. Uh, no, 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 listen, I, it's because i'm like an idiot interrupting you i'm not able to understand So you're saying that the MMA guys, the culture, not MMA, but fighting culture was there. So the fighting culture is there. You know, the Dude, fighting I, culture is there. But I'll tell you what the issue is. The issue is that all of them eventually get into sports to get a government job. They don't really play uh, the sport to actually get medals. You know. True. So you, you know. You know, so, so may if you remember this guy, this this is one guy. Okay, he's 35 years old. His name is Kantharaj Agasa. Okay. Yes. He is one of the most talented Indian fighters. I would say. Like I wish he was. 10 years younger you know because the kind of skills he brings he's a, he's a he's a high level judoka he's a judo practitioner he's won all his mma fights he's now finally got a chance to go to the international stage and and he did all this simultaneously with his government 9 to 5 job and wow. then trained and Dude. if that is not an inspiration story of inspiration i don't know what is not because that wrong, but why all the ufc guys or fighters have these long names Kanta Sar, Agasya, Alexander, unpronounceable. <laughs> Still can't get it right. I mean, no one called Bunty or, or Tony or you know Arun or Raju. I mean, what are those names? It's easier for people like me to get into. Hey, the Bharat is there, na Bharat, 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 Bharat is easy. Bharat is. Yeah. This present government is important to have one Bharat per family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's go back. Let's go back. So, Somesh, uh, let me understand. So, you are completely you're wide-eyed. You're into this sport. You come back to India, and you're very positive that you're going to find these fighters. And what is Arjun? Doing at the same time, uh, I have no idea because oh, I so met you... him much later. Okay, so so your stories are completely different till you meet. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So be a two-part yes. program, ladies and gentlemen. Long time. <laughs> yeah. The love story is a different track, and then there's the fight story. I so think... Rupa, Rupa, and Jem Gold will meet later. <laughs> we'll meet later after the break. Ke baad. Uh, uh, sorry, Arjun, you were saying something. We actually met. Uh, so much. We met at a. We met in Bombay at um, another MMA organization that was doing. Yeah. Um, a show which was a like, very big touted show it had a big card and a lot of celebrities coming to it so we yeah. met at the show and then we connected and we became friends and um, yeah. and this is all the while since 2013 i've been doing commentary and i we did a couple of seasons on in star sports on espn on mtv so i had been in the sport for a while by then especially in the indian mma circuit and That's then right. and then i get a call from uh, mr kamra one day saying that listen buddy we're going to be doing a show uh, do you want to do you want to you know step in and come and try out and that was i think so much about 2 years ago now That's yeah it been... was uh, it, it was about 2 years back yeah yeah 2 years back and uh, since then we've been kind of working together okay but uh, let's quickly understand that you guys are fighters as well so much was saying that he trained uh, yeah so little fighting Uh, no, I, I didn't fight. I trained. Yes, I no, absolutely. No, okay. So you didn't training. fight professionally in that sense, but you, no, no, you no. trained. You, you actually had the experience of fighting. To a certain extent, yes. I had experience of getting people, beaten up. Oh, yeah. Okay, you can put it that way. The point of the matter is that a lot of people will not want to do this, including all the men with the testosterone raging. At the end of the day, you don't actually pound another guy; you get pounded yourself. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, there are a lot of. I love our the community of fighters, the MMA fighters in the world. You know, they are the they are the harshest community. I would say. they are the most critical of any fighter in the world and we always say this to everybody i said you know just step into the gym one day one day and you'll know because everybody was you know everybody thought they were the hottest shit and then you get broken down in that one day yeah and very and, true very and, true 
sooner or later you're going to get even if you're good at it sooner or later you're going to get beaten up which must be not the funnest thing to do at, uh, for a job you know it's it's like lo- almost like losing your job if you're in marketing or sales <laughs> when, when you get hammered people are watching and you know nobody wants to talk to you because you've sort of lost you're feeling low self esteem it's it's really it's fundamentally it, it's like getting hammered literally because that's what happens so i'm just thinking why would you do it unless you're really the very best so there must be so many journeymen so to speak or people who aren't that good at it who still keep on doing it so there's a passion for getting hammered and hammering people Well, yeah, uh, so. <laughs> well, Cyrus. Actually, you know, uh, I mean, if you if you look at it from our side, I think doing that nine to five job is Impossible. you know is is pretty much hammering every single day. And you know, I I personally feel you know that that uh, you know fighting is in our uh, DNA. So you know, there's there's no Very qualms true. in just yeah. trying it out. You know, the so moment you, see, you know what the first punch is basically what hurts the most, and after that, it's just. Exactly. Well, that's what it's they said about marriage, but she pounds me so much, and you know, <laughs> continues to hurt. Oh, just ask you one question. There's a whole theory which I read online, yeah. which of course everything is correct online. It cannot be challenged. Uh, <laughs> and it says that uh, with with fighters, not just obviously mixed martial arts will be top of the pile, but even boxing, wrestling, whatever, taking out that testosterone, releasing it in a way, taking out that rage sometimes or whatever, channelizing it. Like that's a better word. Is yeah. actually good. a lot of these people are very balanced after that because you know, they they take take out their or they store their aggression and aggro or their over aggro in that one spot and then Absolutely. the rest of their life they're very actually true. amongst the nicest people in the world because they're able to you know uh, compartmentalize it unlike others like me driving makes me mad you know i'm abusing <laughs> i just gone abusing i don't know, i i can't recognize myself I mean, the nicest thing i, I say is teri maa ki l u n d i can't even say it now because i'm normal and I, 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 that's kind of language i'm like you know whole uh, Come on, Cyrus. If you're driving in Bombay, it's normal to have road rage. Yeah. That's why Absolutely. you'd become an MMA fighter, I would think. You know, I mean, like get me in the ring. That's how it started. I used to be on and a bike. Guys, and all. Uh, and 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 if the name is very long, I'd back off because then he's a MMA fighter. <laughs> Let's be that I am Sundaram. Okay, okay, okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, but the the thing is that it's like how Somesh said. Now it's in our blood in so many ways. Because if you look at look at the boxers, a lot of boxers when we were doing a boxing league a couple of years ago in 2015, 2016, most of the boxers that were picked up were for, were the army guys, and the army yeah. guys who wanted to earn extra money, extra cash. Right. And they showed, man, these guys are brutal. They yeah. busted everybody up, and it's like I, I wanted. I went in and sparred with some of these guys from you know the north, and I'm telling you, I was I my organs were rearranged in the first two minutes. These guys. But there is so much of talent. It's just it's the oldest story in the book. It takes time. It takes money. It takes governmental help to build anything. Boxing has a lot of backing in the north, but yeah. as a sport in general, if you say the budgets for fighting are not as much as say other sports. Well, you know, you have things like Pulwama and things happening, and the jingoism going crazy, and you hear yeah. armchair critics in Walkeys or in Naples Road saying, "Let's kill them, <laughs> let's destroy them." I'm thinking sometimes, you know, maybe males need to get it out of their system. They make all Absolutely. this talk and all this rubbish and chest beating. Sometimes, you know, uh, five minutes in a like you guys said, two minutes with a real fighter, and it you knocks it out of you that you know you realize that maybe maybe I should stop talking like that. So you, you know, know, very true, be, very good, true. Do you think it would be good if everybody sparred a little bit in their life? Absolutely. You know, you know uh, it was. Uh, uh, it's it's very shocking that actually you're saying this, Cyrus, because you know I was I was talking to my friend's dad. He's uh, about seventy, seventy one now, and uh, he was telling me in his and typically, you know, that you know those Nepensi Road guys. He was telling me <laughs> at at the ground floor of every building in the early fifties and sixties, they used to have a boxing ring in the building. Really? And all the boys used to come there in the evening once or twice in a week and spar. Where was this? Uh, so in a bloody is... Nepensi Road, vegetarian only flats. I don't see that <laughs> happening. Yeah. You, you know, so this guy was staying. So he stays at the Bridge Candy. Wow, Just... so there was like a mini culture of uh, actual fighting. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. You know, so in fact. I just feel that you know the parents kind of pamper the kids too much nowadays, you know, and they need to get out there, get beaten, fall down, get hurt, scratches, yeah. bruises. These things are important, you know. I mean, the more you're covered, you know, the bigger pansy you're going to be. So Dude, you just don't even see Abba Dubi played anymore. Like I remember, yeah. like that was like the that. MMA version of like the ball hitting you in the face and the back. You come back with bruises. Yeah. It was Correct. fun, dude. And that was all out, ah, uh, in school and all. Abba Dubi. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. With a cock ball and all. Yeah. Thak. 
Wow. wow. Very true. Imagine very if they true. had Abu Dhabi in Abu Dhabi. I mean, that would be so <laughs> tough as a commentator. I mean, I could just see Arjun saying, uh, you know, guys, this is just a sport we play in a Gulf country. Yeah. <laughs> Try that more than twice in an hour. Abu Dhabi in Abu, Abu Dhabi. Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. <laughs> yeah. See, 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 see. Okay, so now uh, tell, us, tell us about the podcast. So now you guys have come together. Is there, firstly, is it, is it a good market at the moment? I know it will always be a good market for some males, but is it working in India? uh surprisingly the sport is attracting about 30 odd percent females if i'm not mistaken wow yeah and in fact in 2019 if you see Chicks the bar are men they want to see men <laughs> pound men yeah <laughs> well maybe 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 they are there for the chicks because the chicks fighting is even more exciting i like the chicks yeah. fighting dude so... it's it, it's so funny in the last 5 years the amount of female role models that have come out it was with you know girls like nisha tate ronda rousey in in the amanda nunes and then our own ritu fogat who is fighting at one fc who is representing yeah. india's olympic uh, first olympian that has gone into mma and is yeah. is killing it man now is she doing is she winning yes oh she is she is hammering she's the other women it yeah i'm sure you think she can take amir khan <laughs> easily hang on the boxer or the actor <laughs> no 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 not the boxer <laughs> that that guy's pretty nuts himself no no no, no. <laughs> yeah. the actor the, the wrestler the wrestler acha 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 so yeah you know so in fact if you see the 2019 report uh, there were 100 million people watching the ufc in 2019 alone wow those were the numbers you know so in fact i mean it's crazy it's crazy where the sport is going so when it comes back to the demand i think the viewership of this particular show is going to skyrocket we'll very need, very soon but 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 uh, somesh you'll need indian stars right like everything has to have a desi ring to it for it to really become huge so well that's me no who's going to win yeah <laughs> <laughs> chalo chalo ho gaya ho gaya show band kar do yaar you, you you won this round <laughs> technical knockout but but uh, do we have anyone who can like you just mentioned one of the fogat sisters you is there anyone who can actually be like the the world champion like or close to that uh so i don't see a reason that it's not going to happen you know and uh in fact i tell all the we've been waiting for singles champions djokovic got 18 grand slams on his own federer 20 uh, uh, nadal 20 and we have none zero so so you know i don't see uh tennis is uh, i mean if you really want to play tennis you have to go through the associations which is where the issue is but if you want to get into mma is, these are all private companies so you know you just need to have a good manager some good uh, contacts and obviously great skills so i don't see why in the next 3 to 4 years we can't get you know someone who's going to be a top in the five. lighter weight in lighter weight groups we should do well At yes, least. exactly. We already have a couple of good prospects. You know, yes. there are a couple of guys who are coming out. There's a guy from Bombay, uh, Marathi boy called Sumit Khade, who yes. is showing himself in the regional circuit. You know, there are a couple of companies that are doing uh, regional MMA in India and abroad to market Indian fighters. And right. guys like Sumit Khade, Anshul uh, Jubli, um, Shikhan Shekhar. There are a bunch of these guys who are slowly yeah. coming out, who spent their time, who worked at it. and gone and you know due to which which i think by the way is wrong there are training facilities in india there are a couple of gyms that are popping up but they saw the opportunity they took it went abroad came back they learned what they had to learn and come but, back but and are the indian coaches gym. also that infrastructure is one thing but the coaching and the attitude and all is that good enough or you need a russian guy to come and push you <laughs> <laughs> no it's starting i think it's starting somewhere it's if you compare if you okay if you india is actually a great place to start because if you compare countries like india brazil we are generally we have a lot of poverty a lot of hardship and there are a lot of people coming from that strata of society you look at the brazilians man the, the kind of animals they have the kind of savages they produce that yeah. come to fight it's it's i think it's a matter of time that india will reach that stage it's it's coming it's growing are you, you know, telling me arjun you know, chipal katti that there are no animals on two legs in this country <laughs> i will tell you i have a superb way listen to my scheming mind you just get an under 19 champion from haryana who's 27 and you will be able to <laughs> become world champion in one uh, sort of you know discipline under 19 whatever age group or weight group and then you go and take it further <laughs> we we have all that ready <laughs> and we also have in patiala they always have some foreign coaches who have been pushed out from the hockey federation or whatever the guy can yeah. train he can train you ultimately it's, you know training is training he learn the sport as he goes along 
<laughs> okay, don't take me seriously. I'm wasting your time. <laughs> no, we may have to, we may have to take a break uh, for, in a couple of minutes. But just Absolutely. one question I want to ask you: Is there a unified national MMA in India where you have a national ranking like you have in a tennis, which we mentioned, or badminton, or any of the more conventional sports? So, is there a circuit which follows like you know a holistic approach and an appellate approach where you go up and up and up in one direction and win the nationals? uh so sir is a very very good question uh in very fact good. india uh, india as a country that doesn't restrict you to any amount of federation so i think right like now there America. are probably yeah there are probably 10 of them you know there are there are 10 uh, national federations and each one of them will not let you fight in the other one so you know it just it just so comes down you are national champion in one but there are nine other national champions in the same weight category yes so yes. then there's we do why can't we have one but so that How does a, that down, is the that is a million dollar question because because everybody wants to be the boss of that particular federation and you know honestly one federation can only have maybe one or two bosses so you know what about the other guy from haryana as you said like even he wants to be a boss you know the guy from karnataka also wants to be a boss exactly. the guy from west bengal oh. also mean you know so in fact the good part is that uh, mma as i said is a private run sport uh, most of the big uh, promotions are all privately run so you know you don't need to be a part of a federation to get there you just need to have good skills and a good manager so what about the world body is there a world body or is that also fractions and like the football like boxing they have five six belts how does it work uh so there so there is so actually there is no such thing as a world body there is a world federation but you have to Correct. go to each uh you know you have to go to each country and that particular country will have to have an affiliation of that federation and they sanction the event but when i say sanction which means they check if the gloves are fine you know the fighters are not cheating you know mouth guard uh, the ring is good the groin guard and all of that so apart from apart from the governing part everything else is everything else is privately done So this Alexander, what's his name's brother, the famous yeah. Fedora, Emilian Enko, Emilian Enko, uh, Emilian Enko. I'll I'll learn it. I'm so sorry. It's like uh, <laughs> the English not getting Mulitharan's name right until he won the test <laughs> match and then we all started practicing it. Uh, but so then, how is he world champion? I mean, how do I know who's the best? Okay. Uh huh. The thing is that there was a so in, back in the day there was an organization called Pride. Pride was one of the biggest organizations around the That's, in the world at the time. Is that a gay organization? No, <laughs> no, but <laughs> but I would see why you think that. But I thought the, yeah. It was I, one I of was the... I was a card carrying member. I, sorry, I, I, I give it up. I give it up. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being gay and a fighter, huh? So the yeah. thing is that in mixed martial arts at the time there was there was there was a limited market. There were only so many people at that time, and guys like Fedor who were on top of the you know heavyweight divisions. So the, like there are multiple divisions in boxing. They're the same in MMA. And I think at that time North America was still not had not grown into the sport as much as the East had. Japan was the, I would say is really where the start happened. Yes, martial arts because that's where the fans flocked. It was a time where nobody judged the sport. People were just happy to see the sport. People were happy whether you won or you lost. And Fedor was the greatest because that was called the golden era. It was called the time where you know people didn't fight for people didn't fight for points and people didn't fight for padded records. People fought because they had to support their families. They didn't have money. They literally fought for money, and they went out out there to put on a show. And he was called the baddest man on the planet. because that's exactly what he did not only did he win he put on a show and destroyed everybody but but what about guys like colin mcgregor and all then like why is it that some people are more in the in the spotlight than the others even though he lost his last two matches or whatever for some why does that happen then i mean if, how do i know who's the federer who's the nadal how do i know who's the best well uh, uh sarish yeah. to answer that question uh, see the thing is that there is always a marketing angle to fighting now there are some fighters who are excellent inside the cage but they're not marketable because they don't talk trash you know they don't dress well you know they, you know, they don't have the most expensive that watches that, that ex- external Uh, exactly. Personality which sells tickets. Exactly. exactly, exactly. You know, like people want to come and see this gentleman at the press conference. So we don't know who's the best then, because you're, you're uh, all no, 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 no. I wouldn't like, say that. No. I wouldn't say uh, that. So the be- see uh, any who's the guy who beat Colin McGregor, the um, Nate Diaz from the Middle East. Yeah. No, no. Uh, Khabib, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Uh, Khabib. See, is Khabib. Yes, Khabib is absolutely the best. I'll give him. I'll give him that moniker. He is the see, champ. See, he's, he's the best. He's the I'm, best in I'm that weight fight. category. <laughs> no, no. See, see, in that category, yes. But look, there has always been an argument of who's the pound for pound best. You yeah. can never tell because if if okay, if okay today I'm fine. trained and I'm 120 kilos, I can't fight somebody who's 60 kilos and trained equally because the bigger man eventually, yes, I will have a size advantage over him if we're equally trained. 
now but the, that in his weight division and if you say i would go as far as saying in the sport of mma in as as a lightweight yes he is the greatest of all time wow yes undoubtedly undoubtedly okay. fair enough uh, what we'll do is we'll take a quick break and then when we come back some interesting things to talk about the joe rogan presence in mma <laughs> and well it's good publicity for the sport what you guys think about him he's yeah, actually uh, awesome. affiliated with us he's looking at us to help him uh, boost his rating so we have a certain alliance and a, a job to fulfill we'll take a quick break i'll just practice uh, some kathas this is my <laughs> one inch little finger punch which will now this is my one you. inch <laughs> <laughs> you've heard about it have you huh, somesh the legend of oh, the we've got some fun coming punch. up <laughs> we've got some contest for uh, cyrus later Yeah, we'll take yeah. a break and then we'll discuss my one inch. <laughs> okay, we're back after the break. As we introduce Silvery, here's uh, something more important that I have to do is my wife's painting. She's a very fine painter. Wow. Yeah, she wants twenty thousand rupees for this painting. I think I am going to say ten lakhs because I have to push it. And it's a picture of our watchman who's no longer with us. He's now a cabinet minister. Uh, the state <laughs> but he won't take my phone yeah, call second i thought it, i took it so seriously <laughs> no but it's really my wife painting so i'm going to try and promote her because because of covid we've lost a lot of money in accounts and all that so we're trying to get back on our feet and i'm too old to fight uh, besides i know my hitting somebody once but i it just goes on for too long fights what are you saying cyrus I've, uh, over the years you you look like a power lifter now you're massive so you know what's the reason for the fitness yeah come on i mean I, you're looking I, huge Even I like to stretch. There's no doubt about that. Today <laughs> <laughs> in the morning, uh, this is the problem I have. This is basically weight training, which is an affiliation of anything, but not not fighting. The guys come in and the guys stretch for 20 minutes in front of me. 20 minutes. You got like one hour to work out and 20 minutes of stretching pre working out. What's he going to do after that? He pulled the pulley for two minutes and he played with his penis for five minutes and he walked out. <laughs> I'm like, really? You wake up early, you come here. This is what you do. I never un- get my head around that. You know? Oh man. So, so I think mentality of urban Indians, uh, maybe not right for MMA yet because we're just too soft, as you said. They just, they just just come with a with a rage or a aggression to work out or you know so, <laughs> whatever. See, you can you can always spot somebody who who like it versus somebody who won't. The first time I stepped into a gym, I remember um, this is when I was just sparring with some of the guys. and they said okay you know put on the pads put on everything and i'm like are kya hoga kuch nahi and all that and i remember i got cracked blind which basically means i didn't see it coming and that's the worst <laughs> mouth was open everything my jaw almost got dislocated thank god for a mouth guard and i got pop tuck tuck two shots and you start seeing black around the sides of your eyes that means you start getting <laughs> you're going to get knocked out you're going to get knocked out survive survive somehow so no, i want to go you, through that this is a good point you brought up you know we, we can all Some of us in school, only learn to box a little bit. So if you get yeah. into this thing, the first thing is you'll be using your hands. We don't want to do with your legs. And, and I mean, so when Floyd Mayweather fought uh, Colin McGregor, if it was an all-out uh, legs MMA kind of style, he would have chomped uh, Mayweather. But maybe. Uh, see, maybe, maybe not. You know, you cannot. I mean, you cannot really judge it because honestly, if uh, if Floyd was training in MMA, maybe he he you know uh, he would have been a better fighter. You never know. Do you always have this argument saying that you know it's see Floyd? It's like. who's been training boxing can never compete with floyd who's been training boxing all his life whereas at the on the same hand floyd the floyd can't move his body that way because he's conditioned to keep you know he's keeps his, a defensive boxer his, he just outlasts under his shoulders yeah. he keeps it he keeps it exactly. in a certain manner so his his hips are not tuned to exactly. it exactly the body balance is correct. you know completely different correct so well, for what you take that you you think a bruce lee would have taken on a mohammed ali these are all things that people play around in their mind they even have video games <laughs> on it so, i'm a, i'm a huge fan of both but you know it's difficult at the end of the day to how do you is do you think that a martial artist will have that extra advantage because he can use his legs and his uh, genitals I'm- <laughs> <laughs> no see well, I, it's so sorry so much go ahead please well absolutely yes see because because uh, the more tools you have the more you can do you know so i definitely feel yes uh, in case you know somebody can use his legs or her legs i think i think that's the right way to go and that is definitely a sure shot victory do you know uh, do you know somesh there was a guy around in 2010 there was a super fight there was a cross a boxer called james tony had come into yeah. the ufc to take on, a, yeah. a, 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 take on a guy <laughs> called randy kotor who was a 45 year old veteran of the sport and he just took him down and pounded him out because those are the rules 
So a boxer of that stature came in and got beaten up by an MMA fighter. But if the tables were turned and Randy was to go to a boxing ring, that's probably the same thing that would happen. Randy he, might get knocked out. If he only uses his hands, he's handicapped. But at the end of yeah. the day, because yeah. you can everything, you have that advantage. So what, yes. what, what, what you take on Bruce Lee versus Muhammad Ali? Nobody's giving me a call. <laughs> no, oh, no, sorry. About sorry, five foot five <laughs> and six foot three and the reach and the height and the weight. 140 pounds versus 220 pounds. Stay well, I, well I, would, I would definitely go in for Muhammad Ali. Dude, I, I love Ali, but I don't know yet. Well, you he know was why? also oh, very fast for a heavyweight, wasn't he? I mean, the speed of very his hands. And, super fast. and he adapts to different styles. But then Bruce Lee's Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, uh, Bruce Lee. See, but we've never seen Bruce Lee fighting. You know, he's, he uh, you know, he's space, always been a movie space guy. Space to maneuver. If you see the, uh, I don't know how it works in MMA, but they get more space in the in the fights that they do in gymnasiums. That allows him to go 360 degrees. which allows him <laughs> to attack and, you know, attack and weave. As against <laughs> in the ring, maybe uh, Muhammad Ali will have more of an advantage. Uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to... It's Nobody hard to wants say. to put their house on this one, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, you to, if you had to give me an option saying, okay, Chalo, Mike Tyson versus uh, Mike Tyson versus Ali, in both their primes, that would be a much more even contest. Yeah, but I would think if, Ty- if Tyson doesn't win in the first two rounds, it's over. Because Ali is never going to lose after that. The longer Ali's the, the, had a problem with hard punches. The but past. the hard punching of Mike Tyson doesn't have a record after 3-4. It's very tough. That's what I think. But anyway, maybe you're right. Tyson well, just went 12 rounds with... Uh, see, Ali wouldn't fight. Yeah. Ali would just keep him away. Round one, round two, just keep him away. That that was his style. True. Oh, go, we're having a serious discussion. The jokes have gone. <laughs> yeah, we're exposed as well, boxing lovers. Yeah. Well, Mo- well, if it doesn't get over in the first or second round, then Mohamed Ali's year is definitely gone. Ah. <laughs> That's why uh, Tyson only texts Evander Holyfield. Never calls him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, yeah. you guys should know that uh, I think in 2018, uh, the tournament that I met uh, Arjun, we had got on Mike Tyson here. Yeah? Oh, to Bombay. yes. Hello, and Mike I, Tyson was here. <laughs> I was but yelling. he's a different man mentally than he was then. If you see his car, oh, I mean, ab- absolutely. I mean, yes, I mean that's absolutely. savage because he needed to be that savage, aggressive barbarian yeah. who says, "I'll eat your children" and all that. Yes, he was yes. In his prime. I, that <laughs> person is not there. So the yeah. mental aspect is huge, is it not? No, no, I mean, I mean, he's he's a completely different person. Just so when I was sitting with him, he was like, "Oh, you know, we need to do good for the world. You know, we need to donate. We need to give money. You know, he, like like." Hate really, to use the example, know? but it's like King Ashok. You know, after yeah. the slaughter of Kalinga, some people yeah. go through a complete. You know, they go from one extreme to another. Absolutely, extreme. absolutely. Then, so where what we really admire and it's sad to say this is the brutal Mike Tyson. Yeah, but due but respect, yeah. Well, we like the fact that he's changed into a better human being and all that. But as the thing that as kids growing up, we wanted that guy to come in. You know what Absolutely. I like, Arjun, about Mike Tyson? And I, I'm not saying that's me, but there's no frills. He would wear that yeah. black thing. There's no major music. He would just do this shake with his leg. And the oh other boxer has got seven girls dancing and he's <laughs> rapping and he's playing with his hands and he's slapping the fans. This guy just walked in, two t- uh, touches with the neck. The black thing comes off and he goes for you. Yeah. He's, like, he's like taking the leash of the Rottweiler and saying, kill. You know, that's it. Mike was yeah. from some of the most scary, was one of the most scariest, serious fighters in the world. When he looked at you, when he st- stared down at he's- you, it's the intimidation factor, oh, which, really? you, you know, Somesh and I talk about this for the longest Something time. It, it's, it's, you know, a lot of fighters in the yesteryears, even in MMA, in any form of sport, mm-hmm. is a lot of the mental games that boxers and fighters played with their opponents. That yeah. stare, that, that, you know, the, the grunt of the first throw, everything was to break you mentally. But I'll tell you what, I I personally feel they did it because they just had to do it and it was them naturally. It was it was no show, it this was a, no yeah, it, yeah, I, it, I think there Mike was no flamboyance. What you saw is what you got. He was just a ruthless killer. He, he was the best killer in the business. He wanted to kill. He, 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 was, he didn't want to think about dancing and singing and holding hands and wearing no, floral no, no, clothes. He just threw no, yeah. damn shirt I, off and said, let's fight. No, I yeah. gotta say, but one of the greatest fighters in MMA is a guy called Anderson the Spider Silver. And this guy danced his way to the to you know in his in the earlier days. He's a great yeah, dancer. He's probably Michael Jackson. I'm not saying there are ten ways to skin the cat and all that. I'm not saying that I just said I really like the guy. He reminds me oh, of Viv absolutely. Richards. Viv Richards would walk in and eyeball same run Khan bowling to him. You know, right. certain, it was like I'm here to bat. I'm not here to do anything else. That's true. The, he had right. the intimidation I, I like that. tactics right. were incredible. The intimidation yeah. tactics were he just incredible. cut the frills aside and the tunnel vision was there. And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's the only way 
I mean, Absolutely. Tyson's clay was completely not that, and maybe the greatest of all time. We don't know. Absolutely, no. Tyson oh, was just scary. What a nice plan. discussion we're having. I'm going to cancel my stupid, boring podcast. <laughs> I want to be on court. Uh, brought to you on <laughs> IBM Podcast. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the fat goat. And the so much. Yeah. And the fat goat. And and the fact that he grows weed now is even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a, and as a licensed business, so you know exactly. He's, like, he's the only guy who's gone into weed as a step down from his career. Everybody else has gone up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, guys, listen, a uh, quick word on Joe Rogan. I want to bring Silvery in. Uh, uh, as we talk about Rogan, he's also a big fan. Silvery, can you come in? Before we go into AMAs, uh, what role do people like Rogan play? He always pushes. I mean, he's a huge name in the world of podcasting. He's the biggest. He's the granddaddy. We all have his picture somewhere. Now, my wife's painting is there. So, maybe that is Joe Rogan. <laughs> <Indian version. laughs> you, but, you have it tattooed on the chest, Silas. Don't lie. Yeah, I, do. I, <laughs> I, I, just, I just want his deal with Spotify. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, give me that. I don't, I don't want anything else. But he's always pushing the agenda for MMAs and fighters and uh, yeah. You know, he plays his role, I'm sure, because of his publicity yes. generating thing and all that. And he's yeah. quite he's quite frank about uh, those who, uh, you know, for example, transgenders fighting or people fighting the women's oh, division who are not Fox. really women. Fallon and then Fox. I saw the, I, I can't remember that. names, you know, me, but I saw the fight and the woman looked yeah. very shouldery. And I Cyrus, mean, he's right. There's nothing. See, the, the, that's the thing. His argument is very potent. He just said, if you were born a man, you went through puberty as a man and then you transition, you are essentially a man. Yeah. Because you have the you have a, you know, your arms so the are wrist, bigger, your the wrist, the arms, your bone upper density, body strength is like double of a woman. You know, generally speaking, for average man, so it's, it's, it's true. It's it's different. So he's absolutely right when he said that. So and we I should have three categories. We should have male, female, and whatever <laughs> hell you want to be. Maybe in the future, maybe. Maybe I can win that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta give it to Rogan because he says it like it is. He says he speaks his mind, and he's not worried about backlash. He yeah. just isn't. Yeah. He also so fights. When he's, when he's, he's high on weed, so that's fine. <laughs> oh, he's uh, weed. I don't know what he likes more, MMA or weed. Maybe both at the same time. <laughs> Combined. But, yeah. Now he's in Austin, Austin Texas. It's not uh, yet legalized there, right? To, oh, is really? going to say anything yeah. to him. Why is he in Austin, Texas? <laughs> Dude, he, oh, he moved, moved from, from California. From, oh, because yeah. of the COVID thing. Yeah, because no, of the COVID thing. Because no, no, California because was the expenses. Dying. <laughs> LA was the, like basically, yeah, all the taxes and all he oh, was paying. Because he may have supported Donald Trump towards the end. His views can go right. <laughs> huh? <And> suddenly, <laughs> I, mean, I do appreciate he is left mostly and then suddenly right. And well, I guess that's, that's a lot okay. of fighters supported Donald Trump, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Including Donald the colored fighters. ones. The Mexican fighter said no, bro. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Asmidal, bro. Asmidal supported him. Kumar no, Dana White. supported him. Dana White. Dana White supported him. So he had a lot of support from uh, from the fight community. I think they just think that Donald Trump is the kind of guy you'll see at the MGM Palace or whatever, watching fights and not so much Joe Biden, who will probably be the guy who will help you heal. <laughs> when you exit. Become well, your bitter. Let me hug you. Oh. <laughs> well, Donald creepy. Trump Donald Trump was an uh, investor in, I think, Affliction and Strike Force. So he was an MMA promoter. There was another. He, yeah, he, he, he another was also company. at all the when he was more socialite, or whatever you want to call him, the old days. Yeah. He was a, he was a fixture at all the MGM Grand and all the you know the stadiums where the heavyweight boxing took place. Yeah, uh, because he used to host them. Uh, he used to host them at uh, Trump Taj Mahal in uh, Atlanta. Yeah, right. Notorious for not paying any money, he probably just gave them hamburgers. There's no reason you can't be cheap and successful. Yeah. That's my mantra. <laughs> okay, guys, are we ready for the AM? Is anything else you want to say about the show? So the show is just discussing. It's everything. Yeah, actually. So the thing is, the fighting goat is uh, is all about MMA. It's all about boxing. It's about kickboxing, Muay Thai, anything basically to do with combat sports and the like. And Somesh and I have been talking about this for the longest time. And we decided to come together because we do our show on Sony where we talk about fighting, but we just want to bring out a lighter side to it where it's, you know, we're talking about the fighting. We're going to talk about things that are technical, but at the same time, we want to appeal to everybody for the sport. Well, uh, it's also to do with the sport promotion, you know, getting on fighters, you know, or having some cool giveaways, you know, just just kind of being a little more interactive because once we're on TV, you know, we only have, say, 30 seconds, 45 seconds to speak. It's, you know, it's... Uh, it's a very, very tight schedule. But here on the podcast, I think we can make it lighter. We can have more fun. We can give a yes. lot more information, show so you, some techniques. You want to basically prostitute yourself, which is what I'm doing. Tell your wife <laughs> yes. things and, you know, no, but yes. we've, got a, we've got a cool segment <laughs> called Team Chips versus Team Camera where we make our yeah. predictions for the fights. And if yeah. either one of us, if I lose, Sumesh gets to punch hey, me. Chips, he loses. You'll get all the sponsorship. His surname is Camera. What are you worried about? <laughs> <laughs> General government director, support Team Chips, destroy Camera. 
काम रहा सर वो सेम नहीं है वो जाने दो बैंक ंग Yes. We actually made people move, you know, just just that one inch contact, and the person um, they're not acting; they go back. How we, do you how do you how do you did generate that power? We used to do this. We used to do this fun board breaking uh, exercise when I was doing a show yeah. with Facebook, and we would do this, you know, and we add more and more boards to see if we can do it. So how far is the momentum? It's just this much. And you broke it? Yeah, but only one board. <laughs> okay, After that was gone. I was like, ah. now, now all our listeners are going to spend the whole day breaking <laughs> 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 boards. I'm not even thinking. What are you doing? Just give me two minutes. Start. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Is this table? I have to break this table today. <laughs> Breaking boards. <laughs> no, I I personally have never tried that. No, but oh, I understand. It's super fun. It's like you know, hitting your deadlift max and all that. You know, I understand. When you do that, there must be a sense of you know, you can't explain to other people who don't actually empathize. It's yeah. a small thing in your small world, but it's something. You just feel like a beast. Do you not? Yeah, for, yeah. The, for those th- for those thirty seconds, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so so that that is an intangible product of this whole thing, which we can't explain to other people unless they try it. So please. Right. Peace to and love to everybody, but break boards as yeah. many as you can. <laughs> You're walking. You see a board. You say, "Auntie, give it to me one second." <laughs> okay, let's go to the AMA. Silvi, these boys right. are talking and talking. Oh. All right. The first AMA comes in from Abhijit. Okay. Yeah. Firstly, before we start uh, the AMAs, uh, please like the stream, folks. Everyone who's watching, please like. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, and learn MMA yeah. or learn mixed martial arts, the basics from Somesh and Arjun. You can join <laughs> do, join Team Camera or Team Chips, well, yeah. and the rates are not very high at yeah. the moment. <laughs> and the fighting goat starts tomorrow, so please do yes. tune into that as well. The fighting goat so, yes. will be born tomorrow. Happy birthday, yeah. guys! Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It, it Thank you so much. It will be March the third. A good date. A good date. Yeah. yeah. March seventh is Viv Richards' birthday, so that. That's a very. I don't do. Oh, oh, also, I'm supposed to tell you guys to rate us on Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. So no, please don't, don't do remember that, do that. that. The no, ratings, the ratings that. will be lower than anything ever. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you unask that question? How do you unask? Use technology. Remove it. Huh. Okay. okay, so uh, yes, please do that. So the first AMA question comes in from Abhijit. He says, uh, "Do you guys think that the UFC underutilized the Diaz brothers?" And do you think guys? Uh, and do you guys think Nick Diaz will ever return to the octagon? Hardcore oh. Nate Diaz fan myself. What I'm is super, you, underutilized means? As in didn't let them fight didn't, enough. Didn't let him fight enough. So, Mr. Shivar, take this. Or I'll I'll go ahead. Uh, so I think so. no. I think we should take it part by part because it's such a. <laughs> you take one brother. Answer. He takes one brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> done, done, done. Let's go. So, see, typically, what happens now? Once, once you reach that extreme elite level of fighting, it's the fighter that decides when he or she wants to fight. You know, uh, and because we know, you know, the background of Nate and uh, Nick Diaz, they are again always on marijuana, and they have a different, very, very different lifestyle. You know, uh, they lead, they lead a very hippie lifestyle. Uh, it's more of them wanting to fight rather than the other way around. You know, so they call the UFC and say, "Listen, you know, we are ready in the next six months. If you think you have something, give us a shout." So that's the way it works. So they don't. Uh, they just go off the trail. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. See, the, the thing is that I would love to see these them two both. guys. I'm saying uh, these two guys. I'm not. Nate. You know. Both Nate and Nick are some of the grittiest, toughest SOBs I've ever seen in the sport, and they don't back down from anybody. They don't care who yeah. you are, what weight division you are in. They don't care. They'll fight you on five days' notice. Nate Diaz woke up off his couch in ten days, beat and shocked the world against Conor McGregor. Yeah, that's how you know. You can't forget how. Are you good telling me he trained for only ten days for that fight? He only yes. trained for ten yes. days for them. Yes. I can't believe yeah. that because you want to be match ready mentally and all that. Just ten days, he turned up and won. That mentality, he's they, they're crazy. Yeah. They've got that mentality. Yeah, the fighters first. Not athletes. Oh, he just hates yeah. Colin McGregor so much that it was easy. Oh, that also. <laughs> no, he does. He does. He does. You know. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, that answers the question. They pick and choose, bro, and then oh, they so, lie low. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there was there was a second part of the question whether Nick Diaz will be back, right? Ah, oh. yeah. We hope so. I really so, honestly think. I am as I am assuming he would come back. I'm uh, I'm assuming but, but, but this year he would come back. But but Somesh, isn't that also beauty? The beautiful part of the sport, the romantic element in the sport that you have people are so unconventional that they say, okay, I don't feel like it, and then absolutely. I do feel like it. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely I mean, yes. In fact, you know, in fact, this. 
you know this this is the breed of fighters that we are missing because you know oh, the newer man. crop you know the newer crop are very planned they are like you know i want to fight thri- I agree you know with you. you know i want to fight thrice in a year i want to earn 2 million dollars a year like today's you know, i want to be a big star actors- Uh, so many today's Bollywood actors versus yesteryear's Bollywood actors, and they all rock stars, drag themselves silly, Absolutely. turned up uh, at the wrong time, wrong place. But there was some romance to their madness. Now they're so perfect. I, you, that's such a beautiful way of putting it, the romance to the madness. And yeah, the thing I, is, yeah. so many shows are those kind of fans that was like, oh, just bleed first, you know, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mara Mari. It, it started like that, but then it evolved into what it is today. One sec, you know, like, let's be honest. Tell me that once you go in your car, who doesn't listen to Jhanjaria and the old Akhiyo se Goli Mare? Oh, You know, who, yeah, you, you, yes. know, uh, you know who cares about the new shit? The old shit was real. What is happening right now is very clinical, very planned, too perfect. You know, there needs there needs to be an professionalism kills the breed. Yeah, yeah, I agree Absolutely. with you completely. I mean, your stories of Dharmendra or Rishi Kapoor are far more fascinating than Abs- due respect. Uh, uh, Ranbir Kapoor is a great guy, but you know he's a straight up sort of guy. Dude, Govinda was the greatest Once person I've met in my life. And Jackie Shroff, institutionalized, Jackie Shroff. institutionalized is the word that comes to mind. No, dude, no. So Govinda, Govinda was one of the greatest people I've met. I remember I met him at a fight party. Kanats, K N U T S. He told me the greatest joke ever. He's like, <laughs> he told me the greatest joke ever. I said, Govinda, joke, bol na. And then he was like, you know, he's like, I was in a bus, bus break, third. I pushed the guy in front of me. Guy turns around and says, Hey, dhaka kyu diya? Govinda says, Tune liya kyu? <laughs> who cracks jokes like this anymore man oh, that was wow. the best no. There's you no know what? Back from Govinda's wit. <laughs> you know what? There was. A, uh, I I think there was a time where Jackie Shroff and Tiger Shroff had come on uh, the Kapil Sharma show, yeah. and the fans only and only spoke to Jackie Shroff because it's just how See, real and how raw guy. he was. You're right. Tiger's a lovely guy. Let's not disrespect no. the kids. They're all great. No, But he's too docile. He's he's it's too. Do, it's not docile. He's just he comes from another world. You know, he's just too correct. Yeah, but, but yeah. Bido, yeah. Bido will yeah. just you know say anything, and you know they'll be like, "Oh, bro, one more take, won't he?" Bol sakta. You know, but, but that's the fun, that's the charm, because Bido is that you know he's he's that uh, about to explode any time situation. Which Absolutely, is fun for all of us. Yeah, that I agree is, with you. I, I feel you know, a lot, and not just in your sport, in all sports, it just become too professional. Mm-hmm. That is why I hate the review system in all sports. It should not yeah. be there. There yeah. needs to be an that's element of chance. luck. Fair you enough. Know, I agree with you. you. Know, True. Yeah. So yeah. So that means let to be one there. team suffer. What the hell does it make? <laughs> yeah, he was offside. Who gave one the fuck? The goal is Steve, scored. We won. <laughs> Steve Buckner, dude. Steve Buckner. Come oh, on. He yeah. he ruined us. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Lowest of death. My God. We have won about five up. test matches more at least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I I still prefer old umpires from India who used to do the half one. Now where they put the nose finger. <laughs> I mean that's you know what Bakra. That's the I mean guys' careers at stake. Ah, you know, oh, the bowlers are yes, finally, and then ah, oh, yes, yes. oh, bowlers like what? Drop from the Indian team, the relegated Dilip Trophy, never heard of again. Ouch. All right, next question, bro. Ten fifty one. Yeah, next question comes in from uh, Harvest Kasard. He asks, how difficult is it? Uh, It's having on the show. He's talking to us every day. Yeah, talking to us every Pokemon day. Direct. Harvest, Harvest. Thank you, Harvest. Uh, how difficult is it to promote a combat sport in a country madly obsessed with cricket? Not that cricket is cricket's fault, but what uh, kind of challenges does this? Uh, these, does these but questions are why, on why point, clash? man? Why so would they clash? Good. If these questions are so on point, I gotta give. It's it's incredible. It, You're being sarcastic, over? No, no, dude. No, I would watch both. Perfect. Arjun, yeah. I would watch both. No, that that th- you know the thing is, it's so funny when when uh, when Rajkunda started it in 2012 in India, he had to fuse it with the Bollywood aspect because yeah. nobody he, to it support was, there was a big it. Yeah. Presence, a huge presence of Bollywood. That there was a whole show and dance and everything, and the slogan was "Come for the show, stay for the fights." That was the initial slogan. And imagine Colin McGregor. And Khadib Lo watching Shilpa dance and item numbers before they start. I mean, they start hitting each other. I mean, they're hitting themselves. Of course. <laughs> No, but that I think that was needed when the sport began. But now I think it's reached a point where it's starting to move of its own volition. It's starting to get there slowly. I'm not saying it doesn't need the help. But it it's it's it, there's a it's moving forward somewhere. Is I, cricket killing it? Or, or I, is that a I fair argument? A, I have a different take on this. See, uh, because most of the good uh, shows in the US happen, you know, anywhere from eight PM to about ten PM. So it comes on Indian TV between six AM and eight AM. So yeah. in you know, so in fact, there is a lot of room for other sports. However, see, cricket is like a hundred-year-old tradition in India. No one is touching it. But come on, look at the rise of kabaddi. 
you know the fact you know the fact that sony has put up a separate show for That's the ufc true. you know the fact that ivm has agreed Paddy to has do done well a- uh, not too badly uh, the badminton premier league absolutely yes absolutely yes so in fact kabaddi uh, 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 you know has done really well uh, badminton has done well uh, and again, isl is surviving is uh, isl could do a lot more but i don't know some of they just not picked up steam you know like for some they reason they began well and pl- plateaued a little bit I, I, very true right, you yeah. know and you know uh, you know and the fact that ivm has agreed to do this show just absolutely. shows the fact that this sport has to has to has to go up the only way is up no very true it's the the fact that the the fact that there are windows the, the doors are opening slowly sony opened the door for us 2 years ago and then now with like so we yeah. said ivm is stepping in to do a exclusive fight only podcast called the fighting goat it's yeah. it, it's i've got a forward. solution guys a very <laughs> simple one if rohit fights virat if ishan kishan fights uh, um uh rishab you know we just get the right people to fight from the same uh, that's, discipline a, that's a cricket. damn good idea that's i, I think we, you know ishan fighting mohammed shami i mean i i can see a good scraps happening here you know uh, uh, you know in fact in fact we had a pratik babar on our show i think a few weeks back and yes. he said that yes. you know he said i challenge varun dhawan to an mma fight <laughs> oh, okay. amazing I, just just celebrity match just, just because he didn't celebrity. get the banyan ad <laughs> <laughs> Is like remember Cyrus back in the day the celebrity death match that used yep. to happen. But 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 it makes sense. You use the celebrities in tennis, in cricket, everything. They come and play something. You, yeah. They, the standard may not be great, but I'm saying, oh, come on, if Rohit and Sharma and Virat Kohli are going, uh, you know, hammer and tongs, who wouldn't watch it? No. Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Exhibition match, but uh, not not. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, Pujara versus Ajinkya Rahane, a fight yeah. to the finish, death at its doorstep. <laughs> Agarkar uh, versus Prasad, that would be super. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prasad Old school versus five. new school. <laughs> I've worked with Agarkar. He's a strong. guy for his size that but uh, Prasad is 65 i don't know <laughs> guys mentioned it this is too big it will be the same thing as that khabib fighting everybody else khabib is shorter <laughs> yeah so but, uh, colin uh, mcgregor is almost the same height now what is the difference like about, like about 5 9 5 10 yeah oh. colin is 5 9 5 10 whereas diaz is 6 2 when he fought yeah Yeah, six yeah. two. Wow, excellent. Yeah. What about Lok Sabha uh, MPs versus Rajya Sabha MPs? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, oh you know what? <laughs> That's a question. Would, That's a we question. We would love that. We would love that. You know, imagine. You know, imagine BJP versus Congress. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, I think Congress will need some support. I may have to fight for <laughs> them. It, it depends. <laughs> it depends Kamra on what what turn up, but he's it, lost weight. It yeah. depends on <laughs> depends on what rules they employ, though. Yeah. If they have yeah. the unified rules, maybe. But if they have the old pride rules, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you think if Rahul Gandhi and Yogi Adityanath went head to head, who'd win? Because Rahul is staying fit. away from this conversation. <laughs> I don't know. Why. Rahul is very. Do you fit. mean head to head? He benches you know? decently. He squats a bit. He runs. Yeah. He cycles. I don't know about Yogi's uh, health plan. It, it all depends uh, on Rahul Gandhi. He's got the inner spent... fighting spirit. Yogi's got the fighting spirit because he's that you know come from nowhere kind of uh, politician. So you, oh, you, would you predict? So you got a guy well, who's training, but but the hunger seems to be with the other guy. The, the, who wins then? Well, uh, you know, it's more of uh, like some some kind of Ayurvedic power with Yogi. So I would, you know, so I would go with Yogi. You're just scared. What kind of fighter are you? <laughs> I say no, draw. I'm in mean, Rahul Gandhi's. <laughs> you you want to be safe? Say draw, draw. Match it, draw. No, no. I said it before. I'm not betting. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, you you just you just support the the one and only camera who's on the other side. <laughs> can, we, can we squeeze one more? I know it's yes. 11, but we've been talking yep. so much we didn't get. Yeah. Huh. Uh, one more. This one was actually just similar to what we were just talking about. Kashin Shetty. Kashin Shetty asks. Uh, good morning, all. I had a thought. Instead of elections and voting, what if politicians were elected via boxing matches? Winner gets a seat in the parliament. Sounds good. To yeah. no, there, there I be would, incredible. I would love that. There I would be love cheating, that. No. Yeah, there is. There will always be called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. always somebody should, calling foul. Yeah. No, no, Imagine no, no, sitting no. with the referee. No, we should only have knockouts. Opponent is in Eagleton Resorts overnight. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> How did that happen? You're there waiting to fight. But I didn't do anything. I'm missing Milad. He's in Eagleton. That's going to happen. Only knockouts. Only, uh, not only knockouts. This could go on for days. Huh? Some man. of the older guys. I mean, just think about them. You know, I mean, oof. Achyut well, Anandan pl- in his prime, 90 plus <laughs> batting. I mean, how long is that going to take? Yeah, me a bit. I stand still. Stand still. <laughs> okay, be sir, careful, guys. Sir, oh, sir leg stump, leg stump, leg stump, leg guard, leg guard. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i can't even i'm not even been fantastic <laughs> all right uh, i think we can wrap it up here but uh, yes. thank you again and thank the show releases so tomorrow we're all very excited arjun somesh i'm sure thank you rock. this is one of the most exciting podcasts i was actually awake through it normally i fall asleep by the 27th minute so <laughs> 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 but uh, uh, silver is raising his hand yeah, like a third just, umpire just a present, reminder sir. 
हाँ. Just a reminder, please do like the stream and please do review us on Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts and please do check out the Fighting Goat tomorrow. Yes, so the please, Fighting Goat. And please check tomorrow, out my wife's baby. paintings uh, as we end the show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's bringing in another painting. Can you see it? Oh wow, oh, fully framed. framed. Oh, wow, wow, this is fully framed and all. Yeah, yeah, fully framed. So uh, yeah, the <laughs> the money that we make out of the paintings will go to my favorite NGO, the mom. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Khadib, Khadib, I'm coming for you, boy. Coming for you. Yeah. All right, greatest of all time starts tomorrow. Please watch it. Till then, it's bye bye from me and Somesh and Arjun and Silvery. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir.